Don de esta Anne Frank. Ue Anne Frank. Vadist on Frank. Which is the film I saw finally. After so many months of waiting. This is one of arguably one of my most anticipated films of 2022, alongside Wendell and Wilde. I finally had the opportunity to see it. And um, for anyone who is curious, it is not essentially an animated replica of the Diary of Anne Frank. This is a story that sort of spins the web a little and follows more or less the story of Kitty, an imaginary friend that she had, um, or so it says according to her journals that, and the diary that she wrote, and what she perceives in the modern day, the 21st century, and the social issues that are going on as we speak, involving refugees and illegal immigration, the crisis involving that, and relating it to the stories of the Second World War and the Holocaust. This is a very controversial film, even though it may seem benign on the surface because of the message that it's more or less saying about, well, if you respect the legacy of Anne Frank, then you should also respect the legacy of those who are suffering as well, like the many people who have left Syria and Ukraine and Afghanistan as we speak. It's a tough movie at best, but I actually really liked it. I really enjoyed it. We need more animated films like this, and I know it's a cliche thing for me to say. I've said it about Homer somewhere else. I said it about Isle of Dogs, where I saw it a second time. It got better a second time. I saw it about Flea, and a lot of those films that I just mentioned have in common with Anne Frank. It's stories of oppression and persecution and fighting against the odds or overcoming adversity. And when life gives you bricks being thrown at you, you find ways to fight against it. That's essentially the ultimate message behind this film, and done effective in many ways. It's very powerful, the animation is also very fluid. Um, you definitely feel for the characters that are involved. I didn't feel like it was jittery like Flea, or at best too glitchy and or glassy like... Um, an Annecy film that I saw earlier on called The Island, which had very important messages, but I, I didn't connect with it. But I did connect with this. Hopefully this will be a great tool for young people to watch, and particularly those with more woke and left-wing persuasions. It is a PG certificate, but it is a bit more on the stronger end of that spectrum than something akin to like Frozen or Toy Story, which both share the same rating, but um, are much milder films. Um, not only do we get references to Holocaust and Nazi Germany and persecution, uh, implicit deaths, and then implicit implication of a cow being butchered, as well as references to anti-Semitism, there's also a few bits of bad language and references to the sexual experience, albeit done that most young teenagers or older kids who have went through sex ed at like 11 or 12 would not be unfamiliar with. And also brief size someone smoking a cannabis joint. It's, you would think, oh, that's not very family friendly. And you're right. Like Simpsons movie or Ants or Roger Rabbit. It's more along those lines. Or Worship Down. If older kids can handle it, I'm sure you can too. This is not quite What's of Bashir, which is a film that is done by the same person who did this, as well as Le Congrès, or Le Congress. Ari Folman, um, who hails from Israel. But unlike most... Um, People who are from Israel that I'm aware of, he is not afraid to speak his mind about political and social issues. Anyone who is familiar with Valtzina Bashir will have realized that the film um, definitely speaks its mind when it comes to the Israeli Defense Forces and the brutality that ensued between the war between Lebanon and the persecutions of Palestinians, especially during the Sabra Shatila massacre. And to see Palestinians suffering even to this very day where there was even a film made about it many years ago called Paradise Now is quite disturbing. Um, many people who are of Palestinian persuasion will probably won't see this because they'll think this is just Jew propaganda, but I, I think something can be made of this because it's definitely, if you put it into your own context, a similar story about fighting against the odds and persecution from within, not just from Israel, but also other Arab countries who want to still extreme amount of Sharia law to where they have to leave and then they get further discrimination from other European forces like you know, France 
and Italy, which have seen far-right candidates win elections and gain so much power, even in Ukraine, there were many foreign language students that had to leave the country because of the ongoing war that was going on with Russia. And they were even discriminated against when they tried to get through past Poland and Romania and Hungary. Try to flee for their safety as well as the safety of the Ukrainian men, I'm sorry, the Ukrainian women and children that had to leave. So it's caused a lot of problems. And I think this is probably the most potent film you could imagine. And the ending... It didn't, it didn't make me cry, but it will certainly make some people cry, especially if they get the message across. I mean, in a way that reminds me of films like The Snowman, or When the Wind Blows, or even Foam and his, his own work, Vaults in a Bashir, if you get the idea. Powerful stuff. My favourite film of the year so far, I would say. Skinny Media signing off until next time. Keep on watching and uh, smell the coffee.